from the makers of Cold Water Omo. There she goes. She's heading out the wrong side of the car park. I'll get her for the last thing I do. Just watch it, Mr. Conrad. That might be only too true. We can stop her. If I head down here, cut it off. Careful. We've got to get her. Look, there's her exit. The man Mrs. Peel had hit with her handbag and kicked into the gutter had got to his feet and rushed across the car park. He threw himself onto the bonnet of Mrs. Peel's car, clutching at the windscreen, filling the whole visual area, making it impossible for her to see where she was driving. Mrs. Peel braked immediately. She quickly reversed. Erickson lost his hold and fell off. Mrs. Peel swung her car round and headed to the true exit of the car park. She ignored all other cars and screamed for the exit. All right. You want to mix it, boys? Take me on. Several seconds later, Mrs. Peel knew that she had not outwitted her opponents. Conrad, grimly clutching the wheel of his car, followed her every move. You want to fight to the death, lady? You've got yourself the right man. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 2 of this story, in which John Steed investigates the activities of an old school friend, and Emma Peel proves to him that as far as all types of small armaments are concerned, she can shoot... straight from the shoulder. As usual, at the beginning of any case, John Steed and Mrs. Peel didn't know what they were up against. Steed very interested in the firing of small arms and the science of ballistics, had been baffled by the appearance of a bullet found in a dead body. He thought it must have been fired from a recently designed and top-secret rifle. He'd gone to visit an old friend, Colonel Aristides, leaving Mrs. Peel to follow through on the identification of the bullet. She'd taken it to the ballistics center at Shrivenham, and upon leaving, had run into big trouble. One man had accosted her, and another two were after her in a very powerful car. But Mrs. Peel, as always, had a trick or two up her sleeve. She made the exit from the car park just in time. She headed to the open country, the two men in pursuit. Careful, Mr. Conrad. This car's twice as powerful as that little thing she's driving. On the open road, she doesn't stand a chance. Hold on, here we go. Mrs. Peel, a careful eye on the road and quick glances in the driving mirror, could see what the idea was. Conrad would overtake and squeeze her off the road. The distance between the two cars grew less. Mrs. Peel's gloved hand worked the gear stick. She swung her car round and made a sharp turn down a side road. Conrad followed, just making it in time. He saw the main road coming up again and accelerated, trying to draw alongside. Mrs. Peel grinned to herself and let him get near her. When the main road came up, she swung across it, neatly cutting the corner right across Conrad's path. Conrad was forced to brake in order to avoid a collision. He lost control, the car skidded. Mrs. Peel winced as she looked back to see it angle crazily and end up in a ditch. The man Jackson hit the windscreen. Conrad managed to get out unharmed. He looked after Mrs. Peel, pure hatred on his face. 
Mrs. Pio stretched up an elegantly gloved hand and waved farewell. Then she put her foot down. A short while after that, she joined John Steed at the rifle range. Steed carried four or five revolvers and an automatic rifle. You look like a Mexican bandit, Steed. What, an Ebola? Hmm. Well, I suppose the idea could take on. Have you got the ammunition? Yes. Lead on. Of course, Whitehall's in a terrible state. Mother's never off the phone. Mother never is. Is it about bullet from the FF-70? Not so loud. It's the army's top secret weapon. Oh, so I gathered from Shrivenham. How the devil did that man get himself killed by an FF-70? First of all, I know. Someone blasted one off at him. Without permission? Where are they made? Factory in Surrey. Place is top security. Oh, that's where they must have got the rifle from. That's right. Could have been stolen, I suppose. They're on to us already, Steve. They tried to get the bullet back. Oh? When? When I left the ballistics center. Three men, two in a black saloon car. Might find what's left of it on the M1. They thought because my car was smaller, they'd squeeze me off the road. And they didn't. I'm never squeezed unless I want to be. How was your visit to your old school friend? Was he pleased to see you? Colonel Aristides. Uh, not particularly. You said you thought he was up to no good. That's right. There was an incident recently between his country and ours. We declined to sell them arms and ammunition. I think Aristides is over here to try a little under-the-counter business. Tricky. Everyone seems suddenly to be interested in firearms. Yes. Coincidence, isn't it? Aristides after the FF-70s? Sincerely hope not. But, um, speaking of firearms, how about trying these? Mm. long barrel Suffolk. Kicks like a mule. Mm, but tones up the wrist muscles. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. There's two methods. Straight arm, shoulder high like this, mm -hmm. or center crouch, supported wrist like this. Show me the straight arm position. Right. Good. Center crouch. Right. Excellent. Now, all we have to do is hit the target. Uh, may I? Of course. Oh, we have got a side bet on this, haven't we? Dinner? Of course. Right. Bull. Good shot. May I? The two straight arm. Three more left from Crouch. Now. I think you'll find they're all bulls, Steve. And that's a lot of bulls. Where are you taking me to dine? The uh, Rainbow Room at the Westboro Hotel. Oh? Why there? Colonel Aristides has a suite there. May as well combine business and pleasure, mayn't we? Steed would have been very interested if he could have looked into the Colonel's suite later that day, for he had visitors. Adriana Beardsley and Conrad sat eyeing the large, dumb mute Giles. Is he to be trusted? Are your own companions always to be trusted? Conrad is very close to me. And Giles cannot talk, even if he wanted to. Good. Oh, I'm glad you returned to England in the autumn, Colonel. I think it's the loveliest season. Stately House will be at its best for you. The shooting's magnificent, of course. Of course. There are a lot of good weapons on the free market these days. Oh, all I second-hand are obsolete. Uh, do you think we might have a window open? I, I find town so stifling. Conrad? Of course. Uh, what is your best, Lady Beardsley? Uh, something to stop a man at 700 yards. Uh, a modern rifle? So modern that it's not yet been issued. The, the, the FF-70? <laughs> I've already said too much. How many have you got? I've said far too much. Please. How many? How many, Conrad? Uh, Three thousand. Ah, splendid. And uh, what are you asking? Oh, oh, that's not settled yet. I will give you a good price. You need them very badly, Colonel Aristides. I know. Your um, relationship with the president of your country is far from good. But we'll talk of this later. I really must go now. I, I promise to feed the peacocks at Stokely myself tonight. Let me see you downstairs. Oh, how kind, Colonel. The colonel showed Lady Beardsley out. Conrad and Giles exchanged angry glances. There was a slight struggle for precedence, and Conrad pushed his way through the door. 
Down in the hotel lobby, Mrs. Peel sat reading the evening paper, at least giving the appearance of reading the paper. When Lady Beardsley's party moved out of the lifts, she whispered to Steve. That young man following up the party. With Aristides, you mean? Mm. What about him? He was the dangerous driver of earlier on. Ah, that confirms it. They're all in it together. The colonel must be after the FF-70. I'm uh, going to check up on his holiday itinerary. Uh, you sticking around? I'm still waiting for dinner. It won't be long. Oh, uh, Mrs. Peel, uh, don't look now, but your newspaper is upside down. It wasn't, of course. Mrs. Peel showed the tip of a pink tongue in Steed's direction, and getting up, wandered off in the direction of the street. Lady Beardsley's limousine was waiting at the curb. I believe your president has only 50 ex-Indian Army rifles, Colonel. Inaccurate at 10 yards. <laughs> and likely to blow up in your face, Lady Beardsley. That shouldn't be hard to beat. Thank you, Conrad. Will you drive? Of course. Only... What is it? Something wrong? Conrad, who had been about to open the door, saw Mrs. Peel's reflection in one of the rear mirrors on the car's wing. Mrs. Peel sensed this and re-entered the hotel. Too late, Mrs. Peel. That girl's in the hotel. Girl? What girl? Uh, the one who collected the bullet and got away in that car. What a busy little bee she is. Um, shall I go back? No. No, Conrad. She found us once. She'll no doubt find us again. Let her come to us. And when she does, well, you'll know how to deal with her, won't you? A nice young woman dying will be a change, won't it? Goodbye, Colonel. We shall expect you at Stokely House in the morning. Until then. Mrs. Peel, back in the lobby, retired behind the paper. Aristides and his henchman Giles appeared and headed for the lifts. Mrs. Peel looked at her watch. You'd better get a move on, Steed, or you're going to get caught red-handed. Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo.